Hello everyone, my name is Anang Shalamyan and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about all the books that I read in January and a mini review of each book. So if you're wondering what book you should read next, watch on for you might find your next favorite book among the list. The first book I read in January was called Gun Island by Amitav Ghosh. I have read Amitav Ghosh's The Hungry Tide before and I enjoyed that book a lot. Gun Island was no different. The genre of this book is urban fantasy or magical realism. This book is the story of Deen Datta who is a rare book collector. It starts in the Sundarbans in Bangladesh where Deen lands upon a, an old temple of Lady Mansa. Lady Mansa is the goddess of snakes. Inside the temple, he meets a young person who tells him the story of the Bunduki Shadagor, who is the gun merchant. The gun merchant apparently had a tiff or a quarrel with Goddess Mansa or as they call in Bangladesh, Ma Monosha. So the Bunduki Shadagor had a quarrel with Ma Monosha and she was very angry with him. So she cursed him that he is never going to find happiness in his life. So the Bunduki Shadagor runs away from Bangladesh. He goes to Egypt and then he goes to Venice. And finally he ends up in India to run away from the snakes that Ma Monosha sends after him. But he is unable to outrun her and finally he has to bow down in front of the goddess and ask her for forgiveness for his arrogance in believing that he was more powerful than her. So when the protagonist Dean hears the story, he is chilled to the bone. But he just thinks it to be a random folklore and doesn't pay it much attention. But later on when he goes back to his home, he starts seeing instances of how his life must be connected to this ages old story involving the goddess of snakes and the gun merchant. And that is exactly what this book is about. I wish I could tell you how interesting and how different it is from the other books that I have read. Aside from involving old Bangladeshi folklore in the book, Amitav Ghosh has also done an incredible job of making the reader aware of the current condition of the planet, of our planet Earth and the ecological breakdown that we are going to face soon in the future. So if you want to read a book that's very different from your usual thriller, then you should definitely read Gun Merchant. It has all the elements to make it a complete Pesa Vasool novel. Book number two, Strangers on a Train by Patricia Highsmith. The genre of this book is psychological thriller. Two men meet on a train. One of them is going through a divorce and the other has an abusive father. They both start talking to each other and they start sharing stories. The first man tells him how much he hates his ex-wife. And the other stranger tells the other person how much he hates his abusive father. And they both make a plan. What if they each kill each other's enemy? What if the man kills the other person's wife and the other person kills this man's father? Aside from both of them being on this train at the same time, they don't have anything in common in their lives and the police would never be able to trace these murders back to them because they would never be able to find any motive. What happens after that? Do these men actually go on and execute their evil plan? And if they do, is it actually the most perfect crime of all time because no solution is possible? You have to read this book to find out. If you are into psychological thrillers and fast-paced books, then you should definitely, definitely read this book. The link to buy this book and all the other books that I have mentioned in this video is in the description of this video. If you purchase the books using the links here, I'm going to get a small affiliate commission at no extra cost to you. It would be a wonderful way for you to support my videos and encourage me on my journey. Book number three, Pretty Thing by J.A. Huss. This is a romantic contemporary fiction book. Two best friends, they reconnect on their third best friend's funeral. And this is their story of how they find love that helps them cope with the sadness and the grief of losing someone close to you. This is a spicy book 
with a lot of hot scenes. If you like reading erotic fiction, then you should definitely pick this book up because some of the scenes are insanely hot. Book number four is A Dark Adapted Eye by Barbara Vine. The genre is psychological thriller. 15 years ago, Vera Hilliard was hanged for the murder of her own family member. Now, so many years after her death, a journalist tries to uncover the story of how Vera was like in her life and what led her to commit this heinous crime that shook the whole country. Set in London of the 1940s, this book is an incredibly fast-paced and intense psychological thriller and the author does an amazing job of creating a very tension-filled environment without using too much violence or too much blood or gore. When you are reading the book, you will be so engrossed in the lives of all the people in this family that you won't be able to put it down for even one second. It has about 300 pages but I finished the book in less than 24 hours. It's that addictive. If you like fast-paced psychological thrillers, you should definitely read this book. Number 5. Blindness by Jose Saramago Jose Saramago is a Nobel Prize winner for literature and this book was originally written in Portuguese but has later been translated to English. What shall I say about this book? It's one of the most disturbing yet addictive books I have read. The premise of this book is that suddenly every person in the city wakes up and finds that they are blind. This blindness is not the normal blindness where all you can see is darkness. But here, when these people open their eyes, all they can see is a thick sea of milky white. They can't see any other colors. The only color they can see is white. And the whole city, the whole country turns blind. It's a blindness epidemic and it takes the whole world. The only person in this entire country who doesn't go blind is the wife of a doctor who's also the protagonist of this novel. So this is her story of how she takes care of her husband and the people she loves in a world where everyone is blind. The author raises some important questions because when you are blind, all the things that are important to you, like your name, your job, your social status, or, the, or how big your house or car is, all of these things lose meaning. The only thing that's important to you now is to have enough food in your belly so you can stay alive to see the next day. In this world where there is no order and utter chaos, how does humanity survive? And how does the doctor's wife manage to use her eyesight? where eyesight has become completely meaningless. This book is the story of that. There are some very violent scenes here. So if you are triggered by scenes of mass murder, rape, cannibalism, then you should read this book with care. If you can handle these triggers, then it's an incredibly interesting book. It's also one of the most difficult books I have read because the pages, uh, the sentences don't have any full stop. The characters don't have any names. There are no paragraph breaks. It's like all the pages are like one huge block of text. But I read, I read in an interview where the author said he has done this purposefully so that the reader has the sense of being blind. Because we don't know which character is talking. We don't know their names. We don't know where the sentence is ended because we can't see any full stop. So it's like you are also blind in this world filled with blind people. And this is a very interesting, very visual, very visceral experience. If you like reading books that make you think deeply about what it means to be human, then you should definitely read Blindness. The next book is Little Secrets by Jennifer Hillier. This is also another psychological thriller. And this is the story of Maren Machado, who seems to have everything that a woman can ever want. She has an amazing business, is one of the most richest women in the country. She has a loving husband who can't get enough of her and a beautiful four-year-old son who thinks the world of her. Her perfect life suddenly shatters when one day her son is kidnapped and 
the police can't find any leads as to who took her boy. 15 months later, Marin is now a shell of her old former self. Her business has gone to crumbles. Her husband spends more time away from home than he spends sleeping with her. And the FBI and police have given up any hope of ever finding her son. Every day, Marin wakes up and wonders if this is the day she would kill herself. And then suddenly, she finds something that shakes her all over again. She finds that her husband is having an affair with another woman. But now, Marin is not as helpless as she was when her son was taken. She knows exactly who is trying to ruin her happiness, the other woman. And this time, Maran decides to get rid of this problem permanently. Little Secrets is a story of love, lust, loss and betrayal. And it's one of the most fast-paced books I've ever read. The characters are very well described. And the author does an incredible job of showing us the emotions and the thoughts that go into the head of a person before they make any drastic decision. If you like character-driven stories and also love very shocking twists in the end, then this book is definitely for you. The seventh book is Funny Boy by Shyam Selvadurai. This book is the story of RG who lives with his mother, father and two siblings in Sri Lanka. The story of Funny Boy spans the seven years leading up to the 1983 riots of Sri Lanka and it shows us the sexual awakening of a boy and his journey into maturity set amid the socio-political backdrop of Sri Lanka in the 1980s. Our protagonist RG comes from a Tamil family and we all know what happened to Tamils in Sri Lanka in the 1980s. There was a huge riot between the Sinhalis and the Tamils that led to the emigration of so many Tamils into European countries. So this is the story of RG and how he manages being different amid a world that's already going to pieces. This is one of the most powerful and heart-wrenching books I have ever read. If you are into historical fiction and if you like reading queer stories, then you should definitely, definitely pick up this book. I love it with all my heart and I'm pretty sure I'm going to read it all over again soon. The next book is Whereabouts by Jhumpa Lahiri. The genre of this book is literary fiction. This is also a very interesting book because the protagonist doesn't have a name. The city where she lives doesn't have a name and this book doesn't have a story as such. It is just a collection of chapters with names like at the library, at the bookstore, at dawn, at sunrise, etc. And it shows us glimpses into the woman's life and how she chooses to live a life of isolation, detached from all the people and things she loves. This book was originally written in Italian and then translated to English. And it's also one of Jhumpalairi's finest written words. You can see her skill of how she's able to describe complex emotions by using the most simplest of words. This book has a special place in my heart, but I also understand it's not for everyone. If you are a casual reader who is only looking for a plot-driven story, then this is not for you because, like I said before, it doesn't have any plots but it has characters and you get to see the journey of the character, their evolution throughout the story. And that's what makes it for such a fascinating read. Ninth book is Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier. So I, I already talked about Little Secrets by the same author before in this video. I chose this book Jar of Hearts because I was so impressed by Little Secrets and I wanted to read more by the same author. Jar of Hearts is the story of three best friends whose lives are upturned when they are 16. Angela Wong suddenly disappears and the police can't find any trace of her. Her best friends Georgina and Kaiser are clueless as to what might have happened. 18 years later, the police find the remains of Angela's body buried in the backyard of Georgina's house. And as Georgina is arrested for murder, this is the story of how the other best friend Kaiser, who is now a police detective, how he uncovers the story of what actually happened when Angela went missing and what led to the events of her body being buried in Georgina's house. 
the author does an incredible job of having that sense of mystery in every page and the cliffhangers just make you want to keep reading this is one of the books that you can't stop reading once you start it's highly addictive highly fast paced and the ending is also one of the most unexpected and surprising endings i have read in a long time the last book that i read in january is called the first day of spring by nancy tucker this is also a crime fiction and it is the story of what happens when you abandon and neglect a child and then don't take care of her while she grows up in a world where all her friends have happy functional families this is the story of 8 year old chrissy who longs for a small morsel of love from her parents but her parents who were never really interested in having children they have mostly abandoned her they have emotionally detached themselves from her and this is chrissy's story of how she journeys through this world and how she handles her complex emotions of being abandoned and how she deals with it by choosing to hurt other people and tear other families apart this is a very difficult book to read but it's also very important and the way the author has told the story makes it super interesting you know chrissy is not doing good things but you also know the reason why she is not doing good things and you sort of sympathize with her but then you have this feeling in your head that you are sympathizing with a criminal this book made me feel all sorts of emotions i just finished reading it a few hours before i recorded this video i'm still processing all those complex emotions but if you like reading crime fiction if you like having insights into the mind of a murderer then i'm pretty sure you will enjoy this book a lot so that's all for this video guys i am super impressed with myself that i managed to read 10 books in january my 2022 goal was to read 50 books this year and i've already completed one fifth of my goal and it's not even the end of the first month i was recording this video on 30th jan so i can easily finish at least a few more pages of a book before january is over let's see how this year goes i have an intuition i might end up reading more books than i had planned for so i'm very very curious to know if you have read any of these books that i mentioned in this video and if you have what was your review please let me know in the comments and if you haven't read any of these books i'm also curious if you were interested enough to pick something up from the list that i mentioned do let me know in the comments what book you are going to pick up next and why what made you curious to start reading it if you want to follow me on goodreads the link uh, to my profile is in the description of this video make sure you send me a friend request and let's connect if you enjoyed this video don't forget to share it with all your reader friends and all your book club groups whatever groups you are part of because people are always looking for book recommendations and no matter how many books you have read you can never read enough right make sure to subscribe to my channel for more content like this I'll be back again soon with a new video. Until then, keep reading and stay awesome. Cheers.